Hello playoffs, this is Blabbing Rovers, do you copy? We just picked up a win against QPR to enter the top 10. A win on the weekend will get us very close to the top 6. Do you copy playoffs? This is Blabbing Rovers! That's right folks, back once again with another match review. This time picking apart Blackburn Rovers' latest victory. That's right, the 2-1 win over QPR at Ewell Park. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Keep your back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related. Championship League, World Football related. We're going to all here. A no more Brooksky. That's right. Oh, back-to-back -back wins again, folks. Against a very, very difficult QPR a game. Well, to be honest with you, I did expect to win. I was hopeful for a win. But when the game actually kicked in, you know, towards the back end of it, I thought, you know what? We'll be lucky to get anything out of this game, let alone a point. But we held on for all three. So let's break apart the match and take a little look at it in a bit more detail now, shall we? So 11,505 fans were in attendance to watch this uh, display, I'd say. It wasn't a fantastic display. Uh, Darren Bond, the man uh, controlling things as a referee. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, two goals. Um, uh, well, three goals in the first thirty odd minutes uh, on both sets of uh, both sides of the of the of the of the pitch. First and foremost, Adam Armstrong with, I would say, goal of goal of the season contender. I'm not saying goal of the season winner, but definitely in the discussion. And Joe Rothwell, phenomenal first half display from him. Uh, always running, always buzzing around, like doing a lot of the backtracking, collecting the ball, creating things out of nothing, and he created something out of nothing from what could have been a lost cause this uh, but anyway picks up the ball nice little mazy little run he's getting hunt, hunted down by a, two or three QPR players but he lobs a perfect belter of a, a pass out to Adam Armstrong great control might get a little bit lucky with the control uh, but uh, and then he obviously does what he does gets it onto his right peg Beautifully struck shot into the back of the net. 1-0. But then uh, just 12 minutes later, Jordan Heigl, obviously, the attention was all focused on Naki Wells, obviously leaving uh, um, uh, QPR to go back to his parent club. Burnley, that's right. So, uh, yeah, Hugo was, was the man uh, chosen to continue to score the goals for QPR. And he, and he, and he obviously continues to do just that. Uh, I think he did he score against us in the, in the reverse fixture. I think he did. Uh, but he got back on the score sheet today and leveled it 1 1. Uh, I think it was a bit of a calamity, to be honest with you, with the Rovers defenders uh, giving, uh, giving QPR the opportunity. To, and obviously, a man of his quality, especially at this level, no problems, tucks it in there 1 1. Uh, and then the game went back into Rovers' favour from a corner, as we do. Um, I think it was Rothwell with the corner. Uh, he floated it in. Big Capitano, El Skipperino, Fantasticado, Daryl Lennon with the bullet header to their back bins. Uh, and it was 2-1. And uh, we looked good for it in the first half. And to be honest with you, I thought, you know what? We could get two or three here. Uh, and in fact, there was, a, there was a goal opportunity as well. Not long after the Armstrong's goal that cleared off the line. Um, and if, if that was the case, it could the floodgates could have opened. Um, keep our a little bit fortunate as well. A couple of players uh, getting themselves yellow cards. All I think all three of the, the players uh, all got yellow cards for little nippy tackles on uh, on uh, Lewis Travis, who was an absolute thorn in their side today, running around ragged, showing his true energy, uh, which is what we like to see. So it did finish up as 2-1, though, in favour of Rovers. QPR, the fast fifth, last 15, 20 minutes of the game, were all over us. It was like a rash, big time. And they were a little bit unlucky. Uh, all that possession uh, amounted to nothing. Speaking of possession, QPR did have more than uh, than us. So 57.2% possession. That's that's quite a statistic, considering our Rovers tend to be, uh, especially when playing at home anyway, uh, have more possession. So they did have more possession than the Rovers. 42.8% for Rovers. Actually, Rovers don't throw like 12 shots for us, 9 for QPR. Uh, we dribbled the same amount of times for a piece. Eight aerial battles on, uh, won by Rovers. Seven for QPR. Six corners to their two. Um, that's some of the numbers. Let's take a look at the, the starting 11s now. First and uh, for you guys. Uh, so here are Rovers. Uh, this is the lineup. It was Walton, Bell, Adrabayo, Lennon, and Niami, the back four. Uh, Travis and Downing in those uh, holding midfield slots. Holtby, Rothwell, Gallagher, and Armstrong leading the line. It was the same team that demolished uh, Sheffield Wednesday 5 0 not too long ago. Uh, uh, Rothwell was substituted at halftime with an injury. Hopefully, 
Surely it's not too bad. In fact, I think word in my ear from my producer saying that he won't be in action against Middlesbrough. So he's out for that one. Um, so we might see someone come in, maybe a Buckley, maybe a, maybe a Bradley Johnson, maybe push Downing further forward, a Bennett, who did come on. So there, there are options. Um, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see for that one. Let's take a look at my match ratings now, kicking off with Walton between the sticks. I gave him a 6 out of 10. Bell with a 7. Um, he, he, uh, a decent performance for him today. I think he actually did much better than, than I gave him credit for. Uh, causing all kinds of problems. A lot more buzzing forward a lot of energy from him so that was nice to see Arabaya as well gets himself a, a, a nice 7 again there was some air some, some people were, were ranting and raving and saying how quality he was and he is he is good quality and uh, you know uh, I think he'll leave us at the end of the season to go back to Manchester City feeling a bit better of himself but uh, there's still some moments that he's a bit too casual for my liking same could be said for Marari well but you know when the, when the casual the casualness pays off you know, it looks good on 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 uh, like on the eye, but sometimes when you play a little bit too casual, can can uh, can lead us to a bit of a bit of a messy situation. So yeah, I give it a seven. But on, on flip side, El Capitano uh, Darren Lennon gets an eight uh, for his commanding performance at the back and a goal to boot as well. Naomi also gets an eight, and I just love it. I love seeing him at right back. I think he's an absolute quality player, and we're lucky to have him. Speaking of Darren Lennon and Naomi, Travis follows suit. Another academy player uh, for Rovers. He got himself a big fat eight as well so three academy players picking up eight as well uh, Dan gives himself a seven for his uh, vision creativity his experience his nous uh, he's always there when we're in a bit of a pickle uh, to get us out of the mess hope me though didn't you know every every day we see him he's got a new hairstyle he had the burners today big old side burners uh, he uh, got himself a six didn't really show his true qualities not like he did against Sheffield Wednesday um, so uh, uh, an average performance by Hope but not this man Joe Rothwell an eight for 45 minute display if he was on for the second half I'm sure he would have won 4-1 or 3-1 or at least uh, so he had to be substitute but give him an eight anyway Gallagher had a five a little bit uh, not much to see from him can't believe he lasted the full 90 as well and Armstrong gets himself an 8 as well with a goal uh, to boot and uh, you know he was in he was causing all kinds of problems again and he's just starting to prove what kind of a player he is he's, he's kind of stepping up to the fore now that we don't have Dak for the season goals are, are, are swinging his way he's in the spotlight a little bit more he's doing his goal celebration he's getting a lot of the plaudits uh, it's about bloody time as well. I'm sure, uh, hopefully, we'll see the, the more of him in the back end of the season. Maybe he'll... I think he's just one shot at double digits. So maybe he'll get a 15-goal man out of uh, Adam Armstrong. Maybe even a 20-goal man if he can get in, uh, get a couple of braces along the way. So that was my match. Is that QPR? Well, this is how they started uh, their team. Uh, Kelly between six, Wallace Hull, uh, Masterson and Kane in the back four. Cameron and Amos, easy chair. Osai Samuel and Heigl. I'm not giving you any match ratings because, well, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. But I'll tell you what. Uh, Ize, Osai Samuel, uh, Amos. Uh, they've got some good little good little uh, prospects there. And I'm sure uh, Ize's, the likelihood is he's probably going to go at the summer. And they'll, they'll, get a, they'll get a huge chunk of change from him as well. Maybe 15, 20 million, something like that. Definitely a, a nippy little player. Osai Samuel, though, is, is, is going to step up the plate and obviously have to lead the line for them next season. But he's a handful in himself. So two very, very good career players. Chair is not too shabby as well. High girl, I, know, I think he's on loan. Is he, is he on, on loan? Um, surprised me. The QBR surprised me. They can score goals. Uh, today was just not their day. And I did. I know uh, I got a bit of flack uh, early in the season to picking them to go down. Uh, I'm not saying, that, you know, I'm not backtracking on my words, but uh, they definitely... Uh, have surprised me this season. I thought I thought it's too many mercenaries uh, in here, and I thought I thought Warburton was a, a, a dour appointment as well at the start of the season. But that's just that was that was early early smoke, folks. I think you know the the wind has changed a little bit. Warburton's done absolute bits with this team. He's brought in some experience. He's got some good exciting youth as well. They score goals for fun. Absolute goals for fun, but it's just sometimes they just can't keep clean sheets. Uh, anyway, that was their starting. Let's take a look at some of the other numbers here for you. Uh, so we did talk about the, the shots and all that kind of good stuff. They did have more touches than us. Four, 567 to our 462. 100 more touches than we do. They had 100 more passes as well. 415 compared to our 313. Uh, we had more dribbles though, and we did win the aerial battles as well. Um, down the bottom there, you can see where the shots took place. The two goals for Rovers. One was uh, top right hand corner. I think that was Armstrong's curler, uh, and the bottom left-hand corner was uh, was Lenehan's header, uh, and there's uh, High Girls on the right-hand side. 
you can see all the other bits and pieces. Just pause the screen there and take a little look at, at it yourself. If you're a heat map man just like me, you can take a little look at where all the action took place. As you can see, uh, a lot, I guess, maybe a lot of the touches uh, were the, the fullbacks, the Canes, the uh, the Wallaces, and the Keeper as well, having a lot of possession uh, for QPR. As for Rovers, that right-hand side seems to be uh, the, f uh, the forefront of where all the action took place. Realistically, if I was on the website, I would like to click on Armstrong to see his his, uh, not Armstrong, Gallagher's um, uh, touches to see how much of the field he touched, because he's on the right-hand side as well, so not all the credit should go to Nyambi, but I just felt that that uh, Nyambi was was uh, was was on the ball more, causing all kinds of problems. Uh, you got to give it, you know, Mowbray has, um, let me get back into the four here. Mowbray has done his, done his uh, bits with Rovers, and it, you, we've got to be patient, and we've, we have been patient, and it's slowly but surely turning into something. Uh, the only question marks for me is, is, the, is the loan signings. We've got, we've got a goalkeeper on loan. We have a centre-back on loan. We did have Cunningham left-back on loan. Th those three t the players, when fit, were going to be in the team. That would have been three of the 11 positions taken up on loan. Um, if, we if we were to fill those, those uh, positions up with uh, a rock-solid left-back and a die-hard centre-back and a goalkeeper, maybe, just maybe, uh, we would have uh, the makings of a real contender uh, to maybe push for top six, you know, this season, next season, whatever you, whatever you have it. Because um, right now, you look at it, we have a very young and hungry squad. Ranking Costello came off with some numbers. Armstrong still very young. Um, Gallagher's very young. Travis, uh, he's a baby. Lennon's not too shabby as well. Nyambi's pretty young as well. And then you've got some other good quality players. Ben Brereton will deliver. I'm sure he will. Uh, and also Davenport, not not to mention Buckley. We've got a whole host of players coming on through uh, that will really improve the quality for Rovers. Uh, it's just it's just those missing bits. We need a we need a commanding centre back to partner Lennon and somebody who's who's. Uh, Who's, who's got the experience to, to help push Lenehan onto another level. We thought we had that with Mulgrew, but he's lost two or three pay, uh, 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 yards in pace uh, compared to the, the likes of Tonton and Rabayo and all that kind of good stuff. But anyway, the ingredients are there. Mowbray style of football is is good to watch. You can't complain. You know, back in the day, we've seen, we've seen some shit uh, being played at Ewood Park in the past 10 years, but uh, things are looking better with Mowbray. We've just had, and I've been there. I've said, you know, when the run, the, the the cards are down and we're we're playing shit and the results aren't going our way, you know, yeah, yeah, we we start to question uh, the Mowbray effect. But so f he's just things are starting to click into place. We just got to be a little bit more patient and maybe just maybe this transfer window will bring we'll we'll, we'll see some new faces add to the mix uh, to add some extra spice to Ewa Park. And speaking of extra spice and all that kind of good stuff and the gaffer, here he is with his feedback on the game against uh, QPR. What he had to say. And here he is. Take it away, Gaffer. Um, well, I think first of all, we played against a good side. I think um, a well-coached team. I think QPR. You can see how they play their goal kicks into their box and try and build from the back. I think we decided to to go for them really first half to play on the front foot and try and um, take the initiative. I thought we, I think we did enough first half to probably be more than one goal in front. I thought we had a lot of shots first half, a lot of efforts, a lot of good play, good passing from the back from us as well. It was a good football match first half. I think. Um, second half, Joe Rothwell came off and, and it, it, it took away in options between the lines a little bit for us. And my decision was, you know, playing Elliot Bennett in that position, or am I going to put, you know, Ben Brereton or you know, more attacking mind on the pitch? But at two-one, we decided to um, put a more defensive-minded player on, really. And, and ultimately, I, I don't remember too many times when they threatened our goal second half, and yet they had a lot of the ball, and we sat a bit deeper and we tried to stay compact and. Um, Tried to break away, and yet we didn't really break away enough second half. But um, got the job done, won the game, put the points in the bag, move on to the next game. Adam uh, doesn't surprise me; he does it all the time in training. He's um, sometimes the boys will stop and clap at him as he scores some wonder goals in training. He's uh, and you can see why. You know, when we were playing, uh, you know, for the last two and a half years, Graham and Dak Armstrong has to play. He comes off the left on that right foot and bends things in like he did there tonight. Uh, and yet he's been playing centre forward, which stretches the opposition, which buys some space for the likes of Holtby and Rothwell, and um, allows us to play through the lines of the opposition at times. So, I think the balance of the team's looking all right. I think first time, first half tonight, we were. Pretty good with the ball. Enjoyed watching us for staff, as as I enjoyed watching them. I don't you know. We talked long and hard. We'd been in Portugal working on trying to stop Eze and Cher, who were really, really talented individuals in this league. I think the speed of Samuel as well is something that needed addressing. And um, I thought they were good with the ball. They ultimately pushed us back and 
Um, but I thought we were pretty solid and resilient second half. Uh, so we're happy with the points and, and let's move on to the next game. Yeah, listen, I think uh, different players. I had a Rabaio bring some class and quality. His passing through the lines is, is amazing to watch at times and um, and how fast he is and how he can get across and wrap his legs round in front of people and nick things away from people. Um, Lenahan is a warrior who plays on the front foot and wants to win every challenge and every tackle. I like our central defence at the moment. I think Nyambi is growing. I think for staff, he looked a huge threat against them, really. Has to work on his final delivery into the box, of course, but I think um, I think they look solid tonight. I think, you know, the, 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 the distances from the back to the front of the team, they found it hard with their passing game to get through our lines. And, um, yeah, the combination, the defensive setup was good tonight, I think. Not just the back four, but the midfield and the distances were good. And... Um, Against good teams, you have to you have to have done the work, and we were been to Portugal this week and done a lot of that work, and um, and it hopefully paid off. Yeah, well, it's the first time I've said to you the other week. I, I see five or six draws every fixture list, and yet I don't think it's any tonight. It's um, it was a night to make sure you got the three points, otherwise you start drifting away. And um, we managed to get the points, and we have to look forward. Just take some confidence of the Sheffield performance into the Riverside on Saturday, and see if we can go there and give Mills with problems and. Let's just keep pushing on and working hard. Is Rothwell all right? No, he's tweaked his hamstring, so there's a fair chance he won't make it. Meanwhile, what else has been said over on Twitter? Let's have a little look, shall we? Uh, Jane007 said, uh, Get in, back-to-back -back wins. Love you, Rovers. Off to bed. Happy. All right, for some, I'm still here. Chipping away. Uh, banging out the videos. New NYC Rovers, that's what I'm talking about. East Coast. Uh, it's got to be Joe Rothwell for the man of the match for me. Set up both goals. Track back well. Ignore the penalty he nearly conceded. Horseshoes and hand grenades. Hashtag Rovers. Uh, Rich Sharp, the old journalist, said nine players who finished the game for Rovers were 25 or under, but there was a real maturity to aspects of the second half, but no shortage of grit and determination. Lewis Travis, the standout for me. Uh, I mean, meanwhile, Jen Bellamy said this. Last time we went on a winning streak, it started when we beat Sheffield Wednesday. Bella's start of the week. Week for you right there, folks. Hashtag Rovers. Northern Rovers at this fantastic win. Had to really work hard in the latter part of the game, but we did it well and got the points. Uh, meanwhile, talk of E was to get in. Big win. Two in a row. Time to build. Moving forward. Uh, Tom Schofield said this. Keep plodding like we are. We might make something of this season. Happy just being in the mix. Rosina said this. Top bins, baby. What a bloody goal. Shit me. Come on, boys. Hashtag Rovers. Hashtag Blackburn. Hashtag Blackburn Rovers. Hashtag BRFC. Uh, meanwhile, Mike Delap said this. For all the sitting back and inviting pressure on QPR, we are still unable to have a chance of note in that difficult. Uh, what cut came to chase? When cut came to chase, Lennon and Adorabio stood up manfully and swatted the threat away. More signs we made of a sturdier stuff nowadays. Meanwhile, Adrian Spencer said this. I can't stress this enough. Thompson is a superb defender. Top class. Lucky to have him. Hashtag Rovers and BRSCS.com said this. The very de definition of hard fought. But I'll take it. Yes, it was a very, very hard-fought victory uh, for Rovers. And then how does that do to the table? We'll have a little gander at it in just a second. These are the results over the past week or so. Um, all the way back to the 21st. This does not make a sense. Uh, this does not make a sense. Okay, yeah, so stretching all the way back to last week, uh, Barnsley did uh, lose to Preston. Middlesbrough and Birmingham due to a 1 1 draw. Forrest uh, beat Reading on the Wednesday night. Onto the uh, other Wednesday night, Charlton drew with Fulham. Stoke beat Swansea. That was the only game on the weekend. Uh, and in today's fixtures, Cardiff did beat West Brom to open up a can of whoop pass on the top two. Uh, Hull City uh, lost to Huddersfield. Big win for them. Wigan upset the Apple Cart and beat Sheffield Wednesday 2 1. Leeds came back from 2 0 down to win 3 2. Uh, against uh, a tricky mill. Luton Town defied the odds against Wayne Rooney's Derby County. Wayne Rooney actually scored his first goal on that one. Uh, Brentford lost to Nottingham Forest. That's also a bit of a cannibal pass as well. And Bristol City picked up a win against Reading. But obviously the, the result of the week was Rovers' win against QPR. This is what the table looks like. Leeds lead the way, 55 points on the board. West Brom are in second, 53 points. Forest two points adrift now in third. Fulham fourth, Brentford fifth. Uh, but it's the City are in uh, sixth spot. Down the bottom is Luton, Barnsley and Wigan going down. Come on, Wigan. Go down. Get out of this shithole. You you deserve League One. You can go and have Paul Cock in his, in his, in his business over there. As for Rovers, we are sitting in 10th right now. Four points off not only sixth spot, but fifth spot, boys and girls. Um, if the season was to end today, yeah, it would, it would be a little bit of a, a, a sting in the ass. 
Um, but ten, top 10 is not too shabby. Not too shabby indeed. We've won more games than we've lost. That's for sure. Let's take a look at what's going on this weekend. Uh, right here tomorrow, we'll be, we'll be looking forward to, to the next game for Rovers. Uh, but Derby County will open up the, the next match day up against Stoke at Pride Park. So Wayne Booney's Derby up against Stoke City. Uh, also on Friday, it's Cardiff against Reading. Double match day. Uh, double matches on uh, on Friday. Um, into Saturday, Hull City against Brentford. That's the early kickoff. There's Leeds against Wigan. Sheffield Wednesday take on Millwall. Fulham against Huddersfield. Charlton against Barnsley. West Brom against Luton Town. Preston against Swansea. That's the Belter. QPR against Bristol City. And Birmingham take on Nottingham Forest. But the game of the weekend is at uh, the Riverside. It will be Middlesbrough up against Blackburn. Let's take a look at Middlesbrough, actually. They are in 17th spot. Uh, just one defeat at the past five for them heading into this. Uh, uh, but... But having said that, they have, they've gone three games without a win. So maybe maybe we'll get a little bit lucky against them. That, my friends, is where I'm going to leave it to you, folks. But obviously, this end of this week is the close of the transfer window. Will Rovers pick up any signings? Well, we'll have to wait and see. That's the that's the age-old question. Will there be any outgoings? It looks like Smallwood could be out. Uh, Samuel could be out. We could be loaning Chappers. We could be loaning Davenport. There's a, there, there's, there is, there's a lot of nothing going on right now for Rovers. Uh, on the incomings, but there is a lot of rumblings going on, like potential outgoings, and, and obviously now that this game is done and dusted, it's 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 like a crazy 72 hours up ahead in the old transfer market. If you've got any suggestions or any news that you think is going to happen, put them in the old comments section down below, and we'll take a little look at your thoughts of any transfers coming in. What about the Rovers' victory? Did you like it? Do you like it like that? Do you like it? I like it like that. Uh, two on win against a very very dangerous QPR. QPR can find themselves a little bit hard done by. I think they would have probably deserved a point. A point would have been a fair result because they were very very dangerous and we got a little bit lucky um i'm not saying that we were shit i'm just saying that we were we weren't that great at the back the back end of it the second half was a bit of a toothless display by rovers we just held on um but hey we're gonna win ugly sometimes uh we all not we all don't look like this you know you know this kind of stuff anyway until i see you all again make sure you bang the thumbs up bang the subscribe if you're new because there's new videos every single day on the channel, whether it is Rovers, Championship, Predictions, FIFA. we got it all here. Under one Ruski. I'll see you tomorrow, folks, with the preview for uh, Middlesbrough Rovers. Until then, I'm out. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date. With all things Blackburn Rovers related, Championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>